I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape 5 on Friday Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 8th of January, 2021. On the news today, we start off with a bit of science. A new study finds heavy vape taxes will cause more people to die from lung cancer. Despite this alarming fact, based on science, Colorado's philanthropic hypocrite governor, Jared Paulus, got his emails caught in the cookie jar. You see, he conspired with Altria to specifically word legislation to benefit tobacco giants while decimating everyone else, including the Colorado vape industry and anyone in Colorado hoping to stop smoking. Next, we'll take a look at a Mississippi vape shop that sued the FDA for its deeming regulations and now has advanced its case to the U.S. Supreme Court. Did Congress unconstitutionally give away its legislative authority to the FDA? Only the U.S. Supreme Court will be able to make a determination on that question. In the U.K., they're entering their third nationwide lockdown for COVID-19. And lawmakers are still urging the government to recognize vape shops as essential for smoking cessation progress. In South Africa... The government's motives are questioned once again. In Johannesburg, the Fair Trade Independent Tobacco Association won their case in the Western Cape High Court. And the five-month ban of tobacco product sales in the name of COVID-19 was determined to be unconstitutional. Banning the product had no effect on COVID-19 cases, but it did grow a thriving black market for tobacco and vape supplies. In China, the online sales ban of electronic cigarettes has brought about a rapid development of brand-authorized stores and rocketed players like Relics, Snow Plus, Use, and S'more International into the financial stock markets looking for a massive capital infusion. You may have already heard about Relics partnering with Citibank in the U.S. for their IPO. Well, how about in Hong Kong? Their high PO in Hong Kong could alone raise $1 billion. And Relics has plans on spending $600 million of that to open 10,000 new stores. Meanwhile, in Australia, Greg Hunt's nicotine ban is in ruins because an Australian senator investigating vaping inadvertently quit smoking because she tried a flavorful vape. We'll take a look at her accidentally quitting smoking because of vaping. In France, the vaping industry is helping needy people ravaged by the COVID-19 situation. They're giving away free food and free relief supplies. Yeah, once again, it's the Vapor SO Care Program hard at work helping those most in need. And the highlighted advocacy group for today is Consumer Choice Center. And we'll take a closer look at their article titled, Tobacco Harm Reductions Prospects Under the Biden Administration. All this and more coming up right after this. Yep, today we start off with a bit of science. Heavy vape taxes will cause more people to die from lung cancer, according to a new study. And it's common sense. When you tax a product, people buy less of it. So when you heavily tax a potential life-saving product, such as electronic cigarettes and vapes, fewer people are going to use it. Meaning, sadly, that more people will continue to smoke deadly combustible cigarettes. And more people will die prematurely as a consequence. Traditionally, sin taxes are levied on harmful goods, such as old-fashioned combustible deadly cigarettes, in an effort to discourage their use. But as part of a broader, misguided war on vaping, some states have recently started applying heavy taxes on electronic cigarettes as well. And here's a new study from the National Bureau of Economic Research looking into these taxes and found the troubling consequences that we all know is going to happen. Policymakers should be doing everything they can 
to encourage people to switch from traditional cigarettes to electronic cigarettes, to vaping products, to safer nicotine products. Taxing electronic cigarettes has the opposite effect. And that's basic economic theory. And it predicts what this study now confirms. Yep. When you tax the heck out of these products, people will not switch from deadly combustible cigarettes. They will maintain their deadly habit and they will continue to die at an alarming rate. The moral of the story here is that consumer taxes have consequences and those consequences don't care what the regulator's good intentions were. For the thousands of Minnesotans who will likely end up dying from lung cancer as a result of their state's failed nanny state taxation experiment, it's certainly not going to be worth the price or worth the taxes that they collected because of their do-gooder attitude. Speaking of nanny state, let's take a look at Colorado. Yeah. Colorado's governor, Jared Paulus, got his hands caught in the cookie jar. Actually, it was his emails that were caught in the cookie jar. You see, they worked in cahoots with each other to try and specifically word the legislation in Proposition EE. Proposition EE aims to increase tobacco taxes. Okay. If it was applied broadly across all things, that's the way it's going to be, right? Yeah, well, Altria says, you know what? You add certain wording into this tax, and we won't fight it. Because we're going to make money no matter what. So what did they have added into Proposition EE? How about a minimum price clause? that says all packs of cigarettes need to be at least $7. And then you can raise that up to whatever you want it to be, as long as, you know, it's in there. And you're like, so what's the bad deal about this? Well, here's the bad deal. Imagine if you went out and you wanted to buy yourself a new car. And you decided you don't need anything fancy. You certainly don't have the money for, you know, a high-end Cadillac or something. So what are you going to do? You're going to go buy a nice discount automobile, right? Something on the bottom of the line. So, uh, you just need to get from point A to point B every day for work. That's all. So you want to go out and you want to spend $10,000 on a car. You got a nice little compact Honda car. It's good enough for you. You get in it, you go, it takes you to work and brings you home. That's all you really need, right? Well, how would you like it if your little compact Honda had to have a minimum price that was the same as a Mercedes? Would you pay that kind of money for a Honda? Or if you had to cough up that kind of money, would you go and just get the Mercedes that has all the bells and whistles? Common sense, right? Well, this is exactly what they did with their Proposed legislation, Proposition EE, minimum price, pack of cigarettes is $7, virtually eliminating all the discount brands. And you're like, well, this is not vape related, right? Wrong. Because those minimum prices, they were also utilized to change the vaping regulation. Because... Part of this Proposition EE is that for vaping products, the measure would create a tax on nicotine products to match the tax rates for tobacco products. We just got done talking about how when you tax a product that is helping people get away from deadly combustible cigarettes and avoid the premature death caused by them, that you know they shouldn't be taxed the same as the thing that you're trying to stop people from doing. You should encourage people to move towards the safer nicotine product. 
Yeah, well, the measure is not going to match the tax rates for tobacco products. And the rate starts off at 30% of the manufacturer's list price. Yeah. So you're paying taxes, a fixed tax rate, on the list price of your gear. So when that product first comes to market and it's got a manufacturer's retail price of $90, $89.99, you're going to pay taxes based upon that $90. Forget about the fact that six months after it came out, you know, that's no longer selling for $90. It's going to sell for $50, $49.99 because everybody's going to be discounting it because they got new stuff coming in. They want to move the old stuff along. Well, it doesn't matter. According to what Governor Hollis decided to do, you're going to be paying taxes based upon that $89.99 price that the product first came to market on. doesn't matter whether you buy it now or five years down the road. It's still based on that $89.99 price. So there will be no such thing as clearance items anymore. Because how are you going to clearance something now? You're going to have to take it at a loss. You have to pay the taxes. They're just driving the price up. Well, needless to say, Governor Hollis, Governor Paulus, Jared Paulus, will be going to court because discount cigarette company like it Vector Brands is is seeking to invalidate the minimum price clause in Proposition EE. And we'll see what happens with that later on. Speaking of court, Big Time Vapes is a Mississippi vape shop that has petitioned the U.S. Supreme Court to review its lawsuit against the FDA. And it did fail in the lower federal courts, so the odds are stacked against this court, the federal courts, granting the petition, but the attorneys for the small business are hoping the unique legal basis of their challenge will catch the eye of conservative Supreme Court justices. Filed in 2019, the lawsuit by Mississippi Vape Shop and e-liquid manufacturer, Big Time Vapes and Trade Organization of the United States Vaping Association challenges the tobacco control itself, charging that Congress unconstitutionally ceded its legislative authority to the FDA. They're not supposed to do that. Separation of powers requires that laws are passed by the Congress and laws must stipulate what applies to whom and then who has the regulatory authority to oversee that. Well, when Congress decided that they were going to let the FDA have deeming authority to deem the scissor as a tobacco product because it's sold to cut the cotton going into rebuildable atomizers. It did that unconstitutionally. And they seek a hearing from the Supreme Court to make a determination on this because it's based on the doctrine of non-delegation, which prohibits Congress from giving away its legislative authority to an executive agency like the FDA. We'll have to follow up on this to see what happens. Over in the UK, lawmakers, once again, are urging the government to consider vape shops as essential as the UK is now in its third lockdown for COVID-19. The UK fully endorses the use of vapes as smoking cessation and or harm reduction tools, and it is well known fact that the pressures brought about by the pandemic are leading a lot of smokers to relapse. To this effect, public health experts have been pointing out that closing vape shops at this time is particularly nonsensical. Only last October, the government-funded campaign Stoptober was urging smokers to quit cigarettes by switching to vaping. And now, vape shops are not going to be considered essential services and will 
be required to lock down like hair salons and beauticians, beauty parlors. Well, we all know what's going to end up happening here. People are going to go back to smoking deadly combustible cigarettes because their local vape shops are closed and they're going to run out of supplies. And what are, you, what are they going to do? They're going to go down to their corner store and pick up a pack of cigarettes and lose all the progress that they made in their quit attempts. In South Africa, Johannesburg, the Fair Trade Independent Tobacco Association has slammed the government's decision to appeal their win from the Western Cape High Court ruling. The ruling determined that the five-month ban on the sale of tobacco products was unconstitutional. Last Tuesday, the government filed court papers in the Supreme Court of Appeals. And we'll keep an eye on what happens there. In China, Vape Hong Kong has published China e-cigarette industry current status and future. Yep. In recent years, major participants in the e-cigarette industry, such as Relic, Snow Plus, Moti, Use, More International, have enjoyed the dividends brought about by the rapid development of the electronic cigarette industry. However, since e-cigarettes were banned in China from online sales on November 1st of last year, rumors about e-cigarettes were overwhelming and many small companies in the industry could not hold up and were forced to declare bankruptcy. However, the big brands, the big mainstream brands, do not have that problem. They got plenty of cash flow and they have plenty of alternatives to get the cash flow they need. We talked about this last time in the news about S'more International and how they've gotten richer ever since the uh, online sales ban went into effect in China. But now they need to continue that. And they're not the only ones. You may have heard about Relics moving into its U.S. partnership with Citibank for its IPO. Yeah, that was back in November of last year. Well, they are now moving into the same market in Hong Kong. And they're hoping that their Hong Kong IPO will generate $1 billion for them. And in their prospectus, you can read about how they plan on taking 600 million of those dollars, and they're going to use that to open up 10,000 stores across China to sell their electronic cigarettes. Mom and pop shops are gonna be a bygone era Thing that people are going to look back on because the way that the industry is moving and some people say oh well the industry is just maturing so these kind of things happen when an industry grows out of its infancy and reaches maturity it's a sad day for vapors because this is exactly what it's going to happen like in this country as well the omnibus bill that was Oh, let me see here. I downloaded it. 5,593 pages long has in it buried legislation deeming all vaping products and all parts that go into a vaping product is now a tobacco product. If you were to sell these scissors in a vape shop, it would be considered a tobacco product despite have nothing to do with tobacco whatsoever. But you can go into a Joanne Fabrics and buy this and not have to pay 90% tax on it, like you do in some states. Well, you can read this article yourself from Vape Hong Kong. If you truly want to see what the future of the vape industry looks like, it's not going anywhere. 
the players that are profiting from it, though, that's what's going to change. So let's go over to Australia. We talked about this one already, too. Greg Hunt, his ban, his nicotine ban is in ruins. And you know what we have to thank for that? Got some ideas? You know what to thankful to? How good or how effective vaping is to get people to give up their deadly combustible tobacco habit. Yep. You can take a look at this article on Planet of the Vapes about how Greg Hunt's ban is now in ruins. The level of ignorance and toxicity in the Australian debate has illustrated by the first assistant secretary of health protection saying that there's no evidence that vaping works to help smokers quit is an utter ruin because an Australian senator investigating vaping who happened to become the chairman for this committee accidentally quit smoking when she decided to try one flavorful vape. Not surprising to those of us who picked up vaping and were easily able to stop smoking. However, it was a surprise to the rest of the committee members because they can't understand what they've never experienced themselves. Vaping works and Senator Hughes now knows it. A Sydney Morning Herald report indicated that she hasn't smoked a cigarette in over three months. Wow, who would have thought? Well, all of us vapors for one. And probably you, if you're a former smoker, who now vapes instead. Yeah, as many of us former smokers have already become vapors, no. Vaping obviously works. Senator Hughes wanted to have vape sold everywhere. Convenience stores, gas stations, any place you could go buy cigarettes. She thought you should be able to buy vape stuff. And unfortunately, that's not the way things turned out. But I would like to applaud Senator Hughes for picking up vaping. You have saved so many years over your life. And it's not just about the financial savings because they calculated here in 97 days, she saved over $2,500 Australian in three months. And you can do the math for yourself based upon where you live and how much it costs for you to buy a pack of cigarettes. But vaping not only saves you money, it saves your life. It adds years to your life and it adds quality to the life you have left to live. Take a look at this article, vapehawk.com. There'll be a link in the description below. So let's take a look at France. Once again, Vaporesso Care is out there helping people in need. And France, like many other countries, has had parts of its country decimated because of COVID-19 lockdowns because of the economic impacts of shuttering businesses. And there are plenty of people in need all across the globe today. Vaporesso Care is working in France with the vape shops there to distribute food and other relief supplies to the local communities. Yep. Christmas might be over for most people, but the generosity of these people is continuing on a day-to-day -day basis. So that leads us to our advocacy group for today. Today's advocacy group is the Consumer Choice Center. This is a consumer advocacy group supporting lifestyle freedom, innovation, privacy, science, and 
consumer's choice. They mainly focus on digital, mobility, lifestyle, and consumer goods and health and science. Regulators on local, national, and supranational levels keep regulating more and more areas of our lives. This leads to less consumer choice and makes products much more expensive. CCC empowers consumers to raise their voice in media, the internet, and on the streets and facility and facilitates activism towards a more empowered consumer. Raise your voice, kind of like the World's Vapors Alliance. Raise your voice. You can take a look at my um, video about that a couple weeks back. However, today, let's take a look at an article published by Consumer Choice Center. Tobacco Harm Reduction's Prospects Under the Biden Administration. Despite what happened in the Capitol building, the uh, results of the Electoral College were ratified, and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will be come the President and Vice President of the United States of America in January 20th. And it's unsurprising, therefore, that tobacco harms have been largely overlooked amid the unfolding political drama. Yet almost half a million Americans, more than have so far died from COVID, lose their lives to smoking-related causes every single year. The Biden-Harris administration will take office with a mission to promote public health based on scientific evidence. While tobacco harm reduction remains controversial in the United States, the lower risks of nicotine products like electronic cigarettes and snus compared with smoking are well demonstrated, well researched, and well documented. Objections to tobacco harm reduction seem therefore to be based on ideological opposition to harm reduction an inclination which troublingly both Biden and Harris have sometimes shown in non-tobacco arenas. Kind of like Andrew Cuomo in New York passing the flavor bans and passing the ban on vaping in the state of New York, and now he's working on legalizing recreational cannabis use? Interesting, isn't it? How they can sit there and say that recreational cannabis use, oh, we, we need to do something about that and let them have their recreational cannabis because we're just jailing too many people over something that really doesn't cause any problems. Well, then why are you banning a safer nicotine product that is the single best way, in my opinion, to give up deadly combustible cigarette habit because of the beautiful flavors, the unlimited flavors that are available for vaping. But I digress once again. Anyway, take a look at the article, Tobacco Harm Reduction's Prospect Under the Biden Administration, and you can find several people chiming in on this subject. David Abrams, a professor of social and behavioral sciences at the New York University School of Global Public Health. The most important thing the Biden administration can do to improve public health is to help the public understand the differences in risk between nicotine itself and nicotine delivered with smoke and tar. We must support those who want or need nicotine to find a much less harmful, non-combustible option. You can take a look at all the other people that helped chime in on this one. Azim Chowdhury, partner at Keller and Heckman. Samrat Chowdhury, president of the International Network of Nicotine Consumer Organizations. Alex Clark, the CEO of CASA. Gregory Conley, New Jersey-based attorney who's the founder and president of American Vaping Association, Stefan Didek, California-based tobacco harm reduction advocate, who was the founder of Not Blowing Smoke, 
Abigail Friedman, Assistant Professor in Health Policy and Management at Yale School of Public Health. Michael Landol, the Director of the World Vapors Alliance, who advocates for the rights of vapors and nicotine users in the European Union and elsewhere, based in Vienna, Austria. Michelle Minton, Senior Fellow at the Competitive Enterprise Institute in Washington, D.C., advocate for tobacco harm reduction, as well as other areas like cannabis cannabis legalization and gambling. Ethan Nadelman founded the Lindsdale Center in 1994, which he merged with another organization to form Drug Policy Alliance in 2000. Biden can learn from the mistakes he made in promoting the war on drugs. He can insist that tobacco policy be grounded in science, compassion, health, and human rights. He can seize the political advantage to be gained by treating with respect the 34 million Americans who still smoke and encourage those who can't or won't quit to try whatever works. And just maybe he can persuade his old cigarette addicted friend, Barack Obama, to publicly advocate for the harm reduction approach to tobacco. There's many, many more. Take a look at this article, very informative. And there'll be plenty more to follow. So that wraps it up for January 8th, 2021. This is your Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report. I'm DJ Alex, and my message to you as always, keep on vaping. And thanks for watching.